two, a one, two, three. Uh. What's poppin' everybody? It's your boy Brandon Frazier, aka Brandon X Visuals, and today we have a color grade breakdown. We're gonna be talking about this recent commercial I did for Acura, and we're gonna take a look at my notes read, break down my notes, and dissect this project so that you guys can also achieve the same look I got up here in this video. We're not gonna waste too much time, let's get into it. This is the 2021 RDX PMC edition, one of 360 to ever be made. Equipped with an exclusive thermal orange pearl paint scheme, PMC exclusive design elements, orange contrast stitching, gloss black accents, Acura's super handling all wheel drive, and of course, Acura's unrivaled performance. So we're gonna open up our Resolve timeline here and here we have all of our content. Um, this is a pretty cool shot. This is the opening shot. So we're gonna start off with a handful of shots here and just kind of kind of break this all down for you guys as quickly as possible. So um, yeah, we have this opening shot here. Let's park this poster frame here. All right, so right off the bat, you can see this car is orange. It's very vibrant, very, very delicious. Now, a quick tip for shooting automotive is that you always wanna shoot cars of color. If this car was black or if it was white, all the background would be spilling onto it and would, it would be extremely hard for us to separate the color tones of the vehicle from the background. So it always helps to choose a vividly colored car. Now before my shoot, I knew this car was gonna be orange and that I was probably gonna push this whole background into the cooler bluish realm, right? Um, so yeah, let's get started on the grade and talk about that. All right, so we're gonna park it right here so we can see the full car. Let's just, just take a look at our node tree to see what's going on here. Uh, the first is the motion blur. So if we play this clip back, you can see that it's speed ramped. There's a speed ramp and then it slows down and then it slows down slightly more near the end and you get like the, right? So if we were to take off the motion blur, you kind of see how this is all jarring a little bit. Like it's all jittery just because of the speed ramp. So the motion blur, it does kind of make everything come out a bit smoother. You know, you could probably see this a bit better in full screen if we were throw it up here, you see it a little bit better versus if we were to de deactivate that, that is motion blur there. So to get that, um, I'll give you guys a quick little tutorial in a second on how to get that. Um, and then we have all of our grades here. So let's just deactivate it all. And this is how we essentially started out. And this is what we ended up with. So a lot of work, but we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. So pretty much, we have the motion blur, we'll tackle that in a second. But first off is primaries. Now the primaries is weird because something's going on with this where it doesn't necessarily want to behave unless everything else is activated. But the primaries are primaries. If you guys have ever graded before, you guys know primaries is just adjusting your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights for your image off of your log footage, right? So it's not too crazy. Um, we've all been there before. And you guys can kind of see the modifications here now. Next, we have our base. So the base is essentially the background. What we wanna do with our background, and that is, like I said, push it to the cooler realm, okay? So we kinda of took the whole entire image there and we shoved it into that blue, cool space. Next, we kinda of separated the vehicle from the blueness, okay? Ultimately, what we're trying to do guys, is just create a bit of color separation between the background and the element in the image, right? So I went ahead with my nodes. I kinda of treated them like layers more, more so. And um, we sort of just selected the blue values, which are on this node here, selected the warm orange values on this node here, and then we also pushed our background to the blue realm. So now we have control over the background, the main subject, and the little accents within the frame. Um, and this is all done off of a layered node, so this is all layered. Um, next is my own personal LUT. Now I use this on a lot of my projects. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But this is my personal LUT that I kind of throw in everything to kind of give my signature look. If you guys like it, I will put a link in the description for you guys to purchase um, or even download for free. I don't know, depending on how I feel uh, later on. Now the vignetting, uh, we kind of went through and did like a very preliminary vignette, modified the lights a little bit. Um, then we kind of gave it a bit of a glow. I'll explain all this in a second. First look adjustment main look adjustment, and then we have a final vignette where we really kind of dialed in on the vehicle here in the center. Okay, so 
Uh, yeah, let's break down this uh, this note tree and see what I did here. So, um, yeah, from the rip, what we did was add motion blur. So motion blur is essentially can be done even before the footage is brought to you, right? It's just a little... You guys know what motion blur is, man. If you guys are working with Resolve, you guys have experience. You guys are not amateurs, intermediate individuals. You guys know what's up. So ultimately, to get the motion blur, this is actually a ramped motion blur as well, too. So if you look at it here, you guys see how it kind of moves. It's all keyframed to do certain things so that as I slow down, it's not, you know, uh, blurry. However, in the main bits of it, it kind of starts off and it kind of rises and drops down slowly as the camera slows down. So to get this, you essentially just go into, um, you essentially, we are going to reset that. We want to type motion trails motion trails here it is now if we were to play you see how it's all everything is always blurry you don't necessarily want that right and fun fact um, I'm going to show you guys this uh, just a little quick tip you need to do your motion trails in your primary layer because you guys if you guys go back to when I before you guys see how it kind of alters the the exposure on this now I have another clip here where it's actually in the primary layer itself. Um, if I were to go break that down, it won't let, let me expand that. But it's actually the motion is in the primary layer and it does not affect your exposure values in there. So if you guys are gonna add motion blur, a quick little tip is to just do it all in the primary node. Adjust your balances, adjust your, your tones here, your primaries, and then also throw in the motion trails into that same node to avoid any sort of exposure uh, jump because now we have to double we have to compensate for that change and it's just a bit weird but ultimately um, this is all image dependent we kind of want it to be nothing we kind of want it to be lower but not too dark because it, it is relatively an advertisement we don't want to lose too much um, detail so if you look at my waveform I ultimately kept everything relatively low you know we dropped down the, we just got a bit of contrast, right? We don't want anything to be too light. So what I did, dropped things down just a bit. Dropped it down a little bit. Um, if you look at the mid-tones, obviously everything is super dark now. So we want to raise our mid-tones up a little bit and get to that nice juicy area that we had it, okay? Um, so in the base grade, like I said, because this vehicle is orange, we want to push everything over to that that cooler, chillier realm, right? So what did we do? We kind of went here to our shadows, if you were to start off, I guess. Um, and we kind of took the reds out. So if you were to reset this, reset the lift, it, it, if you were to reset everything, really, um, just off of that, see... It is it's neutral now, and we want to take away a little bit of red out of the shadows to kind of give it that nice, really neutral feel. However, um, in the shadows, however, in the in the midtones, what I want to do is take that up a bit further. So we're gonna go a bit further, a bit further, and we took out all the reds, right? Just to cool it down a little bit. But I feel like I want it a bit cooler, so we're gonna actually increase the blues a little bit. Yeah, I feel like that, maybe a bit less. But we want to tweak it a little bit just to get everything into that cool blue realm. Now, this is all very preliminary. We will come back and adjust things in a second. Next, I went over to my qualifier, and you guys can see here uh, how to do this. If you guys don't know how to do this, it's Shift-H to kind of show exactly what your what your effect is selected on. And you can see we went to the qualifier and we selected, I. so if I were to reset this actually, select everything, you don't select the whole, the whole thing, let's just reset it all. What I did was I just went over the hood, hit shift, went over the hood here, and kept it all relative. I was like, okay, well, I know I need a bit more of the vehicle there, so we're just gonna select, select, select until we have selected a bit too much. And then we're just gonna go to our saturation. And make it, select things that are a bit more saturated than that. Okay. 
um, high low values, modify that a little bit just so that we're selecting as much of the orange as possible. Right now, what tends to happen is here we lose something weird happens where because the the lights are blue, we are losing. Sorry, take off the vignette there. Vignette. Um, because the lights are blue, we're losing a bit of that detail here. But not to worry, a bit of denoising will smooth it all out. And you can see that we have selected everything that's orange. And it's going on, it's spilling on a bit back here with these uh, items in the background here. But, you know, that does kind of create a bit of character. And it is going to be tweaked later on, right? And with this layer, you can see I boosted up the bright, the brightness of that that tone there. You know, gave it a bit more. Just brought it up a little bit. But that's ultimately just to highlight it and separate it from the background. And that's pretty much it for this, this node right here. So we have the base, base node. Right, we made everything a bit blue. We took everything that was orange and we kind of popped it off a little bit. And now we have a good amount of contrast, okay? Next, uh, we are going to select our lights. Our lights are the bluer tones. If you look, actually this is toned down a little bit. So if we were to go to 100%, it's obviously too much. So that's why I uh, turned down everything a little bit. But ultimately with this, we went in and we just kind of went back to our qualifier. And ooh, we selected the blue elements in the frame here. So this is all that blue, all that blue. We don't want as much red. So we're just going to take things and bring them over to this blue realm. Try not to select as much orange. Take the saturation. Yeah, we're pretty much just going to select as much of that blue as possible. And then with this, I just took the values. I essentially took the blue values and turned them up to, turned them up a bit. So all the blue values went in. I was like, okay, kind of want that to be 100%. However, we're going to take everything and drop it down to about, I don't know, 35%. And what this does, create a bit more contrast, but with our video, if we were to play it back, you're going to get some weird artifacting here, right? And that will have to be tweaked. So we go back to our qualifier, and we just kind of modify it a little bit so that we're only really getting eccentric and the, some of the smoke here. Because if there is a bit of haze, it does work out a little bit. It kind of makes sense. We could get away with it in our uh, in our grade. Okay, so off the bat, if we were to go before, after, this is a cool looking image. It's starting to look a bit cooler. Like you have great color separation. And with this, we kind of brought up the values there. You know, much like in the yellow, I mean, much like in the orange, how we bright, brightened up the orange, we kind of are going to do the same thing to pop out those lights a little bit. Not to kind of get, nothing's over, nothing's really clipping. I mean, obviously the hottest parts are clipping, but we'll, we'll, we'll modify that in a little bit. Next is my Brandon X Visuals a lot. Now this is, yeah, this is exactly what it is. Um, you know, it's, it's my LUT. I've created it. I'll... It, it's almost like an orange and teal type of thing, but um, it's done a bit differently. So I had this at 36% because it is relatively where I need it to be for this piece here. Now we're going to take, we're going to add a bit of vignetting. So we kind of want to keep the anamorphics the hottest part or the hottest piece of this image here. So I just went ahead and you know, add a bit, added a bit of darkness to the top and bottom, primarily the bottom. So how I did this was we, uh, we're gonna reset, let's just reset this no grade. How did I do this? Well, it's, it's really simple. You go to your power windows and you select your circle and we're just gonna soften it up, widen it to kinda get the field of view that we want for our vignette, right? I feel like I want about that much, maybe a bit wider, maybe a bit thinner. And then we're just going to go here to our 
first curve window, and we're just gonna take everything. Oh, and we're gonna invert it. Remember to invert. Invert is the important, the key right here, because if you don't invert it, you're just gonna kind of darken up this area. Whereas if you invert it, you're gonna dark up, darken up everything outside of that area. And we're just gonna go ahead to our shadows and drop it down a little bit. Look how much contrast that creates already. Beautiful. Okay, now we might want to tweak it a little bit in our midtones. Drop it down a little bit. And look at that. Anamorphics are screaming. We're here, baby. And then everything else is kind of falling into the background elements. Beauty, before or after. Look at that. That already, if you were to look from the before to the after, this is almost good to go. Like that's that's pretty that's pretty solid. Look at that. That's that's pretty good, but we're gonna take it a bit further. Now the lights, the lights are really cool. The vehicle's really orange. However, I wanna balance it a little bit. I feel like this is a bit too cool. This is a bit transformery. So I went ahead and I just kinda tweaked, tweaked those headlights a little bit to get them back closer to that white value and balance it with the, the overall color of the vehicle to get like a hotter spot, although it's all, and that's, this is not necessary. This is just something I wanted to do. So, Ultimately in this, I went back to my uh, qualifier. I literally just selected the, the brightest values. Um, so we don't really need to do anything here. We don't really even need to do anything there. We just want to select the brightest values and that was in the lights. So if I reset this, it was literally all in the lights there. And then we kind of want to have our high soft, our low soft, Ooh, whoa, what's going on? Our low soft, just to get all those values. And we're gonna denoise it just a little bit so it's not as jarring. So 20 should be okay. Right? And then with this, all I really did was just take the whole thing and I just put the offset. So gain is obviously modifying the color of your highlights and the values of your highlights. Gamma is midtones, lift is shadows, but offset is the whole thing. So I was like, okay, well, this is blue. I want to offset that a little bit and not have it as blue. Bring it back over to the whiter side. And it is modifying a bit of stuff over here because we selected everything that was bright. But if you don't want all that mumble gumbo to be selected, you could just select that there. And yeah, we're not really messing around with anything in the background. It's just more so the values of the lights. Cool, perfect. Now we're gonna add a bit of a glow Look at that, it's really subtle, but it kinda gives the light. If it added on top of this, so the glow is just almost like being a bit of a, per, of a what is it, black pro mist filter. Well, that's essentially what we're doing here. We did not shoot with the pro mist filter um, because on my uh, 14 and 24, just did not accept any filters on it for, uh, for that Sigma there. So we gotta do it in post. The so glow, man, what, what is glow? If, if you guys don't know what glow is, glow is essentially done by opening up your effects panel. So you have your clips, you have your nodes, you have your effects. Much like with the motion blur, and you're just gonna type in glow. Glow is gonna be this feature here where it kind of blooms all the highlights, okay? Without it, with it, without it, with it. Now this is obviously, Jesus Christ, this is too much. This is too much glow. So we can modify our threshold so that it's not as crazy. Um, threshold does seem to be a bit fine, um, but the brightness is too much. The brightness is just far too much. Far too much brightness. And even the opacity, it is a bit much. So we just want to bloom it slightly to give it a bit of a, take away the edge, the, the digital edge from everything, right? And then with the color, I want it to bring, I kind of cooled it down a little bit, you know, instead of being white, I added a bit of blue so it matches. It kind of emphasizes the whole uh, haze that we have going on here. And it's just really subtle, but it adds an additional layer to the to the composition here. All right, so already, man, we're, we're getting pretty close. We are getting fairly close to a solid grade. We just have to do a few more things and this guy is going to be ready to go. So the look adjustment, you can see, all I really did was take things and I moved them from that blue into this green realm. 
just to give it more of an orange and teal versus like an uh, orange and blue feel, just to kind of warm up everything and match it with the rest of the footage here. So this is almost like a tonal adjust adjustment. This is not really a color adjustment. It's more so, so universally unified and modifying that. And I really just went to the went to these pieces here and I modified my values. This is all going to be dependent on your clip. So ultimately, I just took my shadows, added a bit of red because I took out a lot of red primarily, but I wanted to add just a bit more back. And I'll just take away a little bit of that blue. I feel like I took away a bit too much though. So we're gonna add a bit more of that blue. Um, and then yeah, it's really subtle changes. This is usually not necessary if you guys got it right here or if you guys even wanna go back and adjust it here in your looks, that's perfectly fine. But this as a whole, this was just adjust the background, but this way I was able to adjust everything as a whole without throwing off my uh, qualifiers and everything. So that's why I made a whole a separate node to kind of adjust the, the values of the image. But now we're gonna really adjust the values of the elements here. And all I did here was essentially went back to my qualifier. So if you guys are kind of confused as to why I kind of selected the vehicle twice, ultimately here, all I'm trying to do is create color separation. If I were to take off the vehicle, it blends in too much. If you were to try to pick your colors from this, you'd get a lot of spill from the background. That's why I separated it and made the program identify the differences in colors a bit easier here and here. So you have blues that are really contrasted and separated. Your oranges are contrasted and separated. And your background, it contrasted and separated. That's what, that's the method I did there. However, over here, we went back to select the vehicle because we created the separation there. But now what do we want to do with that separation? We want to have a bit of fun with it, right? So what did I do here? I am going to activate that. So I ultimately went back to the vehicle. I went back to the oranges and I was like, okay, let's select, let's like select all of our, let's take our image and select our oranges. Now I want to have fun with the orange. I separated the orange there in the beginning, but now I want to have fun. So we're gonna go to our qualifier. And we're just gonna take, we only wanna touch the, the car. We don't wanna touch anything else. What do we wanna do with the car? So we're just gonna take, we're just gonna drag our qualifier over the hood. And we're just gonna try to bring back pieces of that there. Bring back pieces of this. Um, how much of this orange do we have selected? We wanna get a bit. And you're just going to play around with this so that you're able to get those values. That's a bit weird. Ultimately, this is our selection car. Now, this is because of motion. I don't want to take the risk of getting weird little artifacting. So we're just going to diffuse that a little bit and actually get rid of the highlights. I just want the paint. I don't really need too much of the highlights. The highlights there, so we're just gonna take the high soft off. And the low, we only want the most saturated bits of this. And that's selecting the oranges. Now, what did I do with those oranges? What did I do with these values? I ultimately just took that orange and I turned it up to 11. I went through to the shadows and I was like, okay. So, you know what, let's just go back. So ultimately what I wanted to do is here, here I selected my colors. I just want to take the orange and take it to 11. So I'm just going to take that Oop, wrong node. I'm just going to take that, that selection that we have here. And I'm like, okay, orange, I want you to pop. So I'm just going to drag those highlights into that orange round and really pop that vehicle that, and then the lift, the lift in that. I want to do the same thing. And I'm going to balance it a little bit with the background, but ultimately, like I said, here we created the separation. Here's what we want to do with that separation. And look at that. Look how much that vehicle pops. It's like, hello, I'm here and I'm orange. And I ain't playing no games. That's what I did with that. Now this can be a bit too much. So you want to just balance it with your key output there. And yeah, I feel like that's good to go. You know, a nice popped out image, but um, 
let's create a bit of hierarchy. Like that looks good. But you know what? Let's see what we can do here to kind of separate this vehicle and make it the focal point. And vignette is the way to go. So we're just gonna add that back, add that piece back, and look at that. That vehicle is the center point of that. So you have a nice ramped up pop in. Now, actually, look over here. Look at what's happening there. We're losing a bit of that color there, right? So look at that. We lost it. It's not selected here. So you just kind of want to be wary of that. Um, it's really good for stills, but as playback, weird things can happen, right? So if you were to go and try to select, try to add all that in. Look at that. Look at that. So that's how we got that look from before, after, before, after, Bob's your uncle. We just have a bomb ass grade. Sick. Now, we don't want to do that to each one of our clips in this timeline. We just don't want to take the time to do that. So what do we do? Grab the still. Okay, so grabbing the still kind of copies all the clip attributes and pastes them. But where does it paste them? Well, to find them, go to your gallery and they're all going to be over here, right? It's just so that we don't have to take multiple pieces of the grade and do it to multiple different shots. Okay, so we have our look. Let's go to the next one. All right, well, um, this is the next shot here. Um, really cool little piece. All right, so you see we have a bit of an anamorphic overlay that's just spilling right over onto everything. Um, Go back. To, this whole thing was edited in result, by the way. Um, so turn that off so it's not too distracting there, and we're just focusing on the grade. So look at that. So in this entire grade, if I were to go ahead and just delete everything, actually, yeah, let's just turn it all off. There is a bit of a zoom out. There is all types of stuff happening. This is the raw image. This is after. So. Already, you can see we kind of did the same thing with that uh, first clip. There is motion blur, uh, which is here, I think. Yeah, motion blur, right? There is, apparently this image was perfectly exposed, which is interesting. Oh, no, so this was modified a bit different. So the, the primaries, actually, no, apparently it was perfectly exposed, which is fluke, I did not need to. But ultimately with this, um, if you were to kind of start fresh, um, start with a node. I was like, hey, I don't really want to do too much with this. What can I do? So I selected my, that grade that we made here. I went down here and I was like, apply grade. What can I get? Watch the back. And I was like, okay, there, there's quite a bit going on. But you know what? We can work with this. It's already selected our, our oranges. It's selected everything. Let's just see what we can do to kind of make it flow a bit nicer. Already I got rid of the motion blur because that messes too much with the image. I was like, okay, primary, they're always gonna be different amongst your image there. Let's take our primaries and tweak them a little bit. Let's uh, go ahead, warm up those midtones, bring those back. The blacks are actually surprised. This is actually a really fluke, flukely, greatly exposed image here. Um, just based off of, well, it was shot correctly, right? When I shot it, I was making sure the lighting was on par and everything, and that everything was going to work smoothly. So really, we don't have to do much. We already built our grade here. We did all the work here, and we just pasted it here. So all you want to do is go back through and adjust all these little parameters to kind of make sure that the footage matches nicely. So that's vehicle one, vehicle two. Now you can see that this is, this was a bit darker. We were to go back. The orange is on, it's, it's definitely darker, right? So all we have to do, go back to our look adjustment, right? Just gonna turn that up, bring it back to 100. Look at that, it's almost ready to go. We just have to add our motion blur. So like I said, the motion blur does, is, it is a bit finicky. So we're gonna type in motion, motion trails. We're gonna add it to the primaries layer, like I said, because if you if you don't, and you make another node, I'll show you here. What does it do? It messes. Well, what is happening with there? I just I, that is not a good time. And the default way to do this would be okay. Well, I, I'm gonna add it before. Sure, try to add it before. It messes 
it messes with oh i guess it's not messing with the exposure well it usually does or i guess it was a glitch when it was but ultimately adding that but look at that that doesn't look too good that's that's jarring that doesn't look that looks very unnatural so let's take our tones let's take our value down to one it was at five one that's actually a lot closer to where we want it to be um that, that is a lot closer to where we want it to be however that might actually be good to go that is really good if we drop this if we put the drop off to 0.5 instead of one what do we get now and that's a fairly looking actually yeah that looks really good that looks natural full speed actually it is a bit jarring a little bit so keep it at one and look at that you're essentially ready to go and look how quick that was that took no time you did all your work here in this first shot boom copied pasted it and we kind of did the same thing to all the images all the different images here we have a really cool look at that, that transition we got a bit of overlays in our edit um and look at that easy we just kind of copied and pasted everything kind of copied and pasted However, when it came to the interior, things did not, uh, you know, they just were a bit different. So let's say our interior shot is here. Cool. Looks okay. However, we need to do a bit of work, right? So if we were to go back to our gallery, try to apply that same LUT or that same grade, it just does not, it does not work. You know, like I said, these are all based off of footage or all footage dependent right so we have to go back and do some work here um it looks like we need to boost up our mid-tones severely in our primaries we're going to deactivate our motion blur a little bit but you see how the motion blur messes around with your actually let's reset this guy so if you were to add motion blur it messes around with your values you see how it messes around even if we're or Maybe not. Maybe, I don't know. I was This is Resolve 17 beta, so maybe I was originally dealing with the glitch. You always want to kind of separate them, but we'll have them separated just to see and see how it all behaves afterwards. So we're just going to reset this. And yeah, we need to, we need to bring some mid-tones back. We're probably going to have to raise up the shadows a little bit. Oh. It did copy and paste the post stabilization settings too. So you want to go back, make sure that your similarity restabilize your image, your footage once you copy and paste because it, co it copies and pastes all the attributes, including your stabilization parameters. So you want to go back and make sure that's right. But yeah, ultimately that was pretty quick. You know, it, it copied, pasted, and it was relatively fast. Now, motion blur does take a bit out of your GPU, so that's why we're kind of lagging a little bit. You see how smooth that plays back? Motion blur, it does kind of make it, things a bit choppy, so. Yeah, so we built the grade originally in our first bit, and we're just gonna take it and tweak it amongst our timeline. Amongst our various shots. Now, I will show you something that's pretty cool that I did with this one shot before we wrap up this video. Um, stabilization, we're going to turn that off. We have our timeline, output blanking, let's reset it so we get the whole image here. So here, I did something pretty cool. Um, if you look at this taillight, you can see there's a bit of a red anamorphic flare. Now that would never happen. It's all done right here. So this is an extra bit of sauce that I did with the taillights. So ultimately, I went back to my glow. So I'll show you exactly what I did. So we went back to the glow. Selected it, took it to that node there. Could be adding a new node. And you see how it's glowing, but it's not necessarily anamorphic. It looks very non-anamorphic. It doesn't look too juicy. I'm trying to get like a still where it's not as shaky from the motion blur. But it's not really doing anything. So, but if you go here to your HV, your horizontal vertical ratio, and you take it and you tweak it all the way to the right, it now becomes more anamorphic E. And it gives you that horizontal flare. Now, that's obviously, it's white. It's not really doing the job there. So what I did, made it red. 
just to match that taillight value. And now look at that. You could adjust the threshold and shine and all that goodness, but you want it to also be look fairly natural. And look at that in this shot here. Boom. It just kind of gives it an extra layer of movement and finesse. Now, if, if it's too much and you, it's kind of spilling off onto too many things, look, power window. Only that guy is gonna, you're only gonna see it there now. Now, if you were to go and take, turn that off, you only see it there. It's not really spilling onto the rest of the paint and you're good to go. Look at that. All right, so we talked about color grading. We, color, we talked about how to get this look and yeah, it's, it looks like it's gonna be a wrap. Now, earlier in this video, I kind of mentioned that LUT, that BXVI LUT that I kind of threw in here on my first little preliminary grade. That's my Brand X Visuals LUT. If you guys want to see it, um, I will post it on my website where you guys can download it. I'll drop a link in the description of this video so that you guys can look at it. And it's I'll, I'll make it super cheap so you guys can purchase it. If you guys liked what you've seen here today, please subscribe, like, and comment. Um, you guys could also follow me on my Instagram at Brandon X Visuals. There I have all of my recent projects. And if you guys like anything there and would like to see another tutorial, comment or DM me and I'll be happy to make you guys another video like this. Until then, peace. <laughs>